Folks, as there is one thing that has plagued society from the dawn of time, it's the common cold. It's annoying and it's very mysterious because it's not really that easy to treat. The guidelines for treatment are quite inconsistent. There's a lot of different things that you'll find in different sources that don't make a lot of sense and contradict other sources. Reputable sources, by the way. There are a lot of scam medications to treat the common cold, things that make you think they will help when they really don't. And this causes a lot of confusion for consumers. So whether you have a stuffy nose, a runny nose, fevers, aches, pains, we're gonna cover all of that here today. And this is the best guide to help you select the best product for you or someone you care about. I'm Grant Harding, a licensed pharmacist in four states. And today we're gonna to be talking about how to treat the common cold. When treating the common cold, it's especially important to understand what it is. This is not a bacteria. It's not a bacterial infection. It is a viral infection. Viruses are completely different from bacteria and require different treatment. So going to a doctor and them prescribing you an antibiotic like penicillin or cephalexin or anything like that is not okay. Not only will that not help you get better, but it causes the bacteria that may be in or around your body or people you associate with to become accustomed to those antibiotics, and then they won't work in the future. It's called antimicrobial resistance. We don't want that to happen, so we try to limit use of antibiotics to when they're actually needed. A virus like the rhinovirus, which is the main virus associated with the common cold, has a completely different genetic makeup. Strictly speaking, a virus is actually not even alive. Whoa. How do you kill something that does not live? It's very difficult, but we'll talk about it here today. You may have heard the term the flu before. The flu is not the common cold. The flu is a disease caused by the influenza virus. Why this is so confusing is because, coincidentally, the symptoms are almost exactly the same, and the treatment is almost exactly the same. But I do want to make one thing very clear you should get your flu shot. But again, that's for the flu. It's not going to help with the common cold. Also, I want to make this point because people tend to think that the flu shot wears off and that's why you get one every year. That's not why. It does wear off, but you're going to be protected through the whole winter. The reason why we have a new one every year is because the virus is constantly changing. Remember, it's not technically alive. And each year, our experts do their best to guess what they think the flu virus or the influenza virus, rather, is going to look like in the wintertime. Timing of the flu shot actually isn't that important, but the CDC does recommend getting it at least before the end of October. I personally would have no qualms getting it in as early as August, September. Anyway, back to the common cold. The best treatment is actually prevention. Washing your hands, staying away from people who are sick, covering your mouth when you cough. These are all basic things, but they really, really matter. Oh, and avoiding doorknobs. Gross. There are supplements and medications you can take to help prevent the likelihood of getting a cold or to, I guess, put more accurately, reduce the symptoms if you do get a cold. And one of those is vitamin C. Typically, the dose of about 1,000 milligrams per day is, is about correct. But it's important to note that taking vitamin C daily will not prevent you from getting the cold. But if you do get the cold, it's likely to be a less length of time which is worth it, in my opinion, if you're somebody who likes to take supplements daily. I have a link to all the products I'm mentioning here today in the description of this video. They're ones that I think are cost-effective. That's why I recommend them. Another supplement you can take to help prevent getting a cold is zinc. And I've been a big fan of zinc. I used it personally. Zinc may actually prevent getting the cold a little bit. It will reduce your likelihood of getting it. I guess that is the best way to put that. Zinc is said to have antiviral properties. You can take a look at this image here and it talks about how the different ways it may work. Although we don't know exactly how it works, most people, most experts would say that it stops the virus from entering your human cells. Here's another diagram of how it may work in COVID-19. I get a lot of questions about which type of zinc to use and in my professional opinion, it really doesn't matter. The most common ones are zinc oxide, zinc gluconate, what I would say is if you're trying to prevent a cold, 10 milligram daily is about where you want to be. Now you can take zinc after you do get a cold to help reduce the length of that cold as well. And again, we really don't know what the dose is for this, 
but in my professional opinion, about 10 milligram every three hours is about right. But what is really important is you have to start this quickly. Definitely within 48 hours of the first sign of symptoms or some experts say 72 hours, as, as soon as possible, basically. If you start feeling a runny nose coming on, grab the bottle of zinc. For prevention, one of my friends is a pharmacist and developed a supplement that uses zinc, vitamin C, and a couple other things. It's called Dose and Remedy, and I have that link in the description as well. Intranasal zinc sprays are probably not the best. It can mess with your sense of smell, and it's just not really worth it. If you noticed, it hopefully will work, but it's not exactly a godsend. So most people would say the benefits of intranasal zinc do not outweigh the risks. If you do get sick, it's not a fun time, so you can take other medications to help with the symptoms as well. One of the mainstays is acetaminophen, and fun fact, we don't really know how acetaminophen works. It doesn't matter if you use tablets or liquid. If you're an adult, you can still take children's liquid. There's nothing special about it that's only for children. And this helps with the achiness, the, the muscle pain, and the fever. For adults, a dose of about 500 to 1,000 milligrams of acetaminophen is about right, but you have to keep that below 4,000 milligrams per day. Going above that dose can cause liver toxicity, and this is very serious. Like, it's not just a legal warning or something. About half of all liver failure cases in the United States are due to acetaminophen toxicity. Here you can see some products. It's very, very cheap at the Dollar Tree, but if you don't want to go to the Dollar Tree and rather have it delivered, it's also cheap on Amazon. Ibuprofen also helps reduce the fever and can also reduce inflammation. There's a lot of debate about which one you should use. I personally don't care. I typically use acetaminophen just because I know I've used it before and I've had great success with it, but ibuprofen is perfectly okay as well. We do know how ibuprofen works though. It's a COX inhibitor. Ibuprofen can cause issues with like stomach ulcers, bleeding issues, and it's rough on the kidneys. They sell ibuprofen tablets and capsules at the Dollar Tree. I do not recommend the capsules. They're typically more expensive and there's no benefit in taking a capsule. Capsules do not work any quicker than a tablet. That's a myth. They don't have liquid at the Dollar Tree though. On Amazon though, it's quite cheap. For a runny nose, which happens to me all the time, typically a first generation antihistamine is best. Things like diphenhydramine or Benadryl, which you can get at the Dollar Tree, they're very cheap. I believe they have tablets and liquid at the Dollar Tree, if I'm not mistaken. Antihistamines like diphenhydramine block histamine. So that stops the secretion of the nasal liquid. But first generations also have an anticholinergic effect and they can make you drowsy. I don't think anybody who's sick is really going to be outside doing a whole lot. So if that matters to you, I mean, be cognizant of that. But for the most part, I don't think it really matters. First generation antihistamines like diphenhydramine do have a little bit of a link with developing dementia. I looked into this. It's not statistically significant, but for something like allergies where you take it every day, it's just best to avoid and use a second generation like cetirizine. But for something like a runny nose while you have the cold, I mean, you wouldn't be taking it that long, so the risk is virtually non-existent. The dose is about 25 to 50 milligram every four hours as needed. For a stuffy nose, Sudafed is pretty much the best. Be aware this is different from Sudafed PE. The active ingredient in Sudafed PE is phenylephrine. Phenylephrine as a tablet is junco garbanzo beans. We are not phenylephrine stands around these parts. Sudafed, the active ingredient is pseudoephedrine, and you have to present your ID at the pharmacy in the United States to get that. And do be aware, it can kind of raise your blood pressure a little bit, so that's something you may want to discuss with your doctor first. Afrin or oxymetazoline spray is goaded with the sticks for relieving a stuffy nose. Quite cheap at the Dollar Tree. You can also get it on Amazon. But you can only use this for three days because it is very habit-forming. The phenylephrine nasal spray does not have the Junko Garbanzo beans warning, so that is worth a try for some folks. And that's available on Amazon as well, obviously. I mean, they have everything on Amazon. And don't forget about non-medicine things that you can use for a stuffy nose, like a neti pot or anything similar, or even just a saline nasal spray. You can get the saline nasal spray at the Dollar Tree. One of the most common things people approach pharmacies for is a remedy for cough. And this is actually pretty tough to treat because our meds for cough are not good. <laughs> even our prescription cough medicines aren't even really that great. At the Dollar Tree, you can get dextromethorphan, and this helps suppress a cough, but 
it does have a lot of interactions with antidepressants. If you are taking an antidepressant and you don't want to take that risk, honestly, it's better just suffer through the cough. It's not going to help that much anyway. Every once in a while, a first-generation antihistamine like diphenhydramine actually can help with a cough. Sometimes there is an allergic component to it, and it's said to be a cough suppressant regardless if there's an allergic component anyway. The American Academy of Family Physicians does not endorse this, but other guidelines do. Mucinex or guafenacin is junk. It's not going to help a cough. And in my professional opinion, it doesn't help get mucus out of your chest either. Guafenacin is said to be a mucolytic. If you do have congestion in your lungs, what I recommend is a saline nebulizer, which you can get on Amazon. And you put these little vials in it. There's uh, a 0.9%, a 3%, and a 7% hypertonic saline that you put in the nebulizer and inhale through your lungs. The machine's pretty expensive. It's like $30, $38, $40, something like that on Amazon. And most guidelines would point you to the hypertonic 7% saline, but just in my personal preference, I like the 0.9%. The 7% is a little bit harsh on your lungs. That's just my opinion. Acetylcysteine is another one that might be worth a try, but I can't really form an opinion on this. A lot of studies use like an oral capsule that you would take. Some use a nebulizer, um, and I'm just not really sure. I think it's worth a try if you want to, but um, I don't know. I'm sorry, I don't have an opinion on acetylcysteine. For me personally, the worst part about having a cold is getting a sore throat. I hate it so much. Thankfully, we do have a lot of really good meds for a sore throat. Phenol spray is great. It'll numb those painful areas. You can get it on Amazon, uh, but it is kind of difficult to find sometimes. You probably could get a pharmacy to special order it for you, a generic version. It'd be like $5 or so. Benzocaine spray is probably the best, but this is going to be the most expensive. And do be aware, using benzocaine can cause something called methylglobinemia which means your blood just doesn't have enough oxygen. Mucinex makes a benzocaine spray, which I love, but it's quite expensive because it's brand name only. And it's a 8% benzocaine, right? There is a 20% benzocaine spray called Hurricane. I want to try this thing so bad, and I will this winter, but it's really expensive. It's like over $40 a bottle. So now you are released into the world with all of this expert knowledge to help fight the cold this winter. The key takeaway I would like to say is zinc if you're getting sick, acetaminophen if you have a fever and aches, cough medicine you can pretty much do without, it's not going to help that much anyway, gunk in your chest, use a saline nebulizer, but it's quite expensive. For a sore throat, the phenol and benzocaine spray are goaded. For a runny nose, first generation antihistamine like diphenhydramine. And for a stuffy nose, I'd say either Sudafed or oxymetazoline.